in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on social media as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. The subject that I have chosen to partake in upon this time period, within this time frame, upon this video, however you want to say, the subject is black men can win a race war. First of all, it is so sad that we would have to entertain even the thought of war. Because when one thinks about war, we think about the destruction of property, the extreme violence, the loss of life, the hatred, the displacement of individuals and families and the destruction of families and I could go on and on. We have an idea of what war is. So when we talk about war, we talk about black men being able to win a so-called race war. Why must black men even entertain the idea of a race war? It is because the war did not start today. The war started hundreds of years ago. And we have allowed ourselves to be the booty of a conqueror. That is why in today's society, Booty is the rage, whether it is the booty of some woman shaking her behind or it is the booty that you get when you destroy another people, the benefits of the destruction of somebody else. That is called booty. Women were called booty. Diamonds and land and anything that you get from being the victor of a war is called booty. The war did not start in 2015. The war started as soon as a people or a nation decided we will enslave and we will, uh, we will become the aggressors unjustly against other people for our benefit. That is when the war started. So now, the races who created race in order for there to be a race war, they are upset because their victims now are getting to the point, sick and tired, and regardless to the consequence, they are ready to take some type of action. Hmm. And the racists are arrogant and they tell us, you can win. <laughs> well, some of you believe that. So is that a true belief? Is that a true statement that black men cannot win a race war? As far as we know, and history verifies this. Black men, black people, black women and children. For the last 400 years. We have been victims.
very, very peaceful, considering the evil and the horror that we have faced since coming to the shores of North America or already being here in America, being turned into slaves for the benefit of others. Labor that did not benefit us yesterday, nor does that labor of our ancestors benefit us today. It is still hoarded by a vicious, unempathetic enemy. Black people are peaceful. You may say, well, look at the FBI statistics. Black people are violent. That is a violent lie. You cannot make slaves out of a violent people because a violent people would not go for it. These who are the descendants of slaves having dark skin born in America, we are a peaceful people. Our ancestors were a peaceful people. That is why you were able to come in with your over aggressive behavior and your lies because our people were trusting and you were able to do what you done. You could not have done that to a people that were like yourself violent. Well, I take that back because the word slave comes from uh, the time when the Slavic people who were Caucasian were enslaved. However, if you are docile and you are trusting, then you become more of a chance that you will become a victim of a person or a people or another nation that expresses such an aggressive behavior that you're not used to. Some of you may speak of Nat Turner. Nat Turner was violent. He killed all those Caucasian pink people during his rebellion. Nat Turner was a Christian man and in Christianity y'all say that Christianity represents peace. But Nat Turner and many other slaves were driven to violence because violence were was placed upon them unjustly. And it is natural for you to fight against that which brings you harm. On a personal level, I was bullied when I was a child. I never did anything to anyone. However, there were those who saw that I could be an easy victim and I was bullied from the time I was in the first grade until the time I was a junior in high school. And I want to say, unfortunately, I had to go to war with those who were bullying me. And when I went to war with those who were bullying me, I found out I want y'all who are scared of races. I want you to understand that they and my bullies are not as powerful, not as strong as you believe if you stand up to them. I was afraid. Now listen, listen to me. I was afraid of my bully. But I was tired of being harassed. I was tired of being chased. I was tired of getting kicked in the backside every day. Sick of it. The book stops here. And when I decided to go to war and had to, unfortunately, I had to turn to violence, then the violence against me, then the violence against me stopped. The bully still tried to be bad, but ever since that time I decided to defend myself, then that bully, his whole demeanor changed. I was not number one on his priority to mess with. Matter of fact, he did not mess with me at all no more. If you take the proper action and y'all need to stop playing games 
all these marches and all these debates and all this other foolishness that you got going on. Take the proper actions. Overnight, these people will leave us the hell alone. I'm telling you this. So don't tell me that black people are not peaceful. Compared to the horror of slavery and Jim Crow. All those hundreds of years. Black people all over the nation should have risen up and set this country on fire. Enough is enough. Sooner or later people get tired. You have had 400, over 400 years to keep messing with us. Lynching us. Making mockery of us. The buck, the buck stops somewhere. You gotta stop. And since you don't want to stop, then I'm going to stop you myself. Like Malcolm said, by any means necessary. You don't want to be violent. Brothers and sisters, we don't want to be violent. But how else, when you're dealing with these people like this, what else can you do? I don't want to hear about voting and education and the single Female, family, and all this other mad crazy stuff y'all talking about. You're getting kicked in the backside. You're being murdered on the streets every day. Your children not safe. And while I'm on the subject, not only does this message go out to racists, but the message should go out to anybody that brings harm to the black community, including black gang members. I would hope that the black gang members or on our side. But if they want to continue that type of behavior. And bring death to the black community. Then the black man need to stand up. And give them the same whipping that the racists deserve. And you can win. Stop being so scared. If you're going to march. You march off to a real war. Yeah but we going to lose. Let us see. Let us, let us see if we will really lose. What do you mean by we will lose? The holy book of the Muslims called the Holy Quran. It will back us up. It says clearly, fight with those who fight with you. But never be the aggressor. We surely are not the aggressor. We have done nothing to these people. At all. We have been of a great benefit to these people. We have built their nation that they stole. Built it up from the ground up. And then they turn around and call us lazy. It is the lazy people that need slaves. We are the victims. We didn't have slaves. You're the one that went out and gotten slaves. Because you lazy and trifling. Filthy and nasty. And evil. History will verify everything I said. We have never been the aggressors. So the Bible and Quran is on your side. The evil of living in a racist society has gotten to the point you can't even get a traffic ticket. You go to jail and end up dead at the end of the day. How is that possible? I want to say to these, to these punkified and sissified, chicken-eating Negroes, these so-called elders, with all this gray hair and you look silly. Cut some of that stuff off. <laughs> well, that's a personal choice. <laughs> you know, we are what we are. If you're old, you're old. But anyway, that's not my point. My point is, these so-called elders with all this wisdom telling our young people, y'all need to calm down. They don't need to calm down. You need to get angry. When I was dealing with my bullies back in the day when I was a young boy, if I had gotten angry, I would have gotten rid of these 
bones off my back long time ago, but I was scared and I really couldn't get angry. I was docile. So they kept doing to me what they was doing. You need to stop quenching the anger of the young, passing on this cowardice, this punkified attitude, this scary cat attitude to our babies because they ain't scared. They sick of it. Then their children have to face the same thing. If I stop my bully, then my bully cannot bully my children. Because I, as Barney Fife always say from the Andy Griffith show, I nipped it in the bud. The reason why this continue is because we refuse to nip it in the bud. Clearly, you ain't sick of getting your butt whooped by racists. Terrorized by racists. Harassed and oppressed. Un being done unjust by racists. If that's the case, then that's on you. But you better get out of our way when we come through. And you better not snitch. And you better not betray us. Because the racists ain't going to protect you. You ours, buddy. No more games. If you have to stop, if we have to cross this line, then like they said in the 60s, baby is on. Tired of it. You can't go to jail and you end up hung. Silly stuff. That's not silly. I'm talking about we shouldn't have to go through stuff like that. Lord knows it ain't, it ain't silly. The kind of madness that we tolerate. The racists say, and you believe that you can't win. On many videos, the racist pink people come out and they tell us, we will kill you wholesale. We got guns. We got grenades. We got bazookas. We got, we got, we got, we got. I don't care what you got. My bully was far more powerful than me. Had more friends. I was all by myself, a loner. But the thing about it, I decided I would rather be dead than continue to be bullied by this bum and his sissified punk crew because that's all they was when I decided to fight against them and defend myself against their aggression. I have the right to defend myself against aggression. I have the right to fight with those who fight with me. I did not do anything to my bully. Black folks have done nothing to the government or any racist person. No Chinese people here. No other, no Asians, no Indians, no other Africans. We have done nothing to nobody, but we're always the, the brunt of jokes and making mockery and being exploited. That has got to end. Our children do not deserve that. We don't deserve that. We pay just as much taxes. We fight in the army. You better. No, 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 no. So the racists say. You want to race while you got it. Bring it. You'll lose. We'll kill you wholesale. In fact. As you know. The government will get involved in that. So they'll bring their military. Their. Their drones and all this other stuff that they got it's sort of scary ain't it you guaranteed to win i mean we are guaranteed to lose right well many of y'all believe that many of you have you many of you believe that and you haven't tried to do nothing fear keeps you from doing nothing absolutely nothing at all how do you know you haven't even tried. Do you think that your enemy would tell you that you can win? Your enemy is not going to tell you that you can win. Your enemy is always going to tell you you're going to lose. Do you think that the North or the South believe 
when the, if the North told them they're going to lose, the Confederate nations fought to the end. Yeah, they lost. But also at the same time, they made their point. And the American, the federal government respected the those who were defeated in the South. And that's why black people caught hell. Because they made these deals to keep those in the South happy. Because if they went to war one time, if the South went to war one time, if they succeeded one time, don't you think it's possible they'll do it again? Oh, we can't, we can't go through another civil war. Are you getting my point? Are you understanding black man and woman and children where I'm coming from with this now? Yeah, the South lost. But did they really? <laughs> so you're going to lose. You haven't even tried. Bruce Lee, the great master of martial arts, philosopher, he said, defeat. I want you to listen to these words. I'm paraphrasing. But defeat is not reality until it is accepted as reality. i said that again. Defeat is not reality until it is accepted as a reality. You, before you have done anything at all, you have already accepted defeat as a reality. We can't beat we can't beat them in a race war. Fear. You so scared. We need to stop being so scared. You should be scared of begging and marching and pleading and all this stuff. You are an embarrassing people doing that. Not that what we have done is not, is not honorable. But you see it is ineffective. You're dealing with a people who don't have a heart. They have no conscience. They enjoy racism. They like this. The bully liked what he was doing to me every day. Laughed and joked about it and had fun. They read the posts on social media. They laugh at you. Make mockery of you. But if you went to war. And you just. And you began to. Put a whooping on them. I can guarantee you. All that laughing. All that making mockery. All that stuff that you see. It will stop. Because now. They feel the hurt. That you have always felt. Do you understand? Oh wow. You are defeated before you can even start. What if George Washington, the father of this country, not our father, but the father of this country that we're not citizens of, we're, we're pretend citizens. We have to fight for rights that everybody else, even immigrants that just came off a boat yesterday, they already have it. We have to continue to fight for our rights, our humanity. But what if George Washington, the father of this nation, what if they had your attitude? What if George Washington and uh, Patrick, what's his name, and, and Ben Franklin and all those guys, what if they had your attitude? Because George Washington and the pink people of this nation, they took on England. England was the greatest power at that time. It was the it was the sole superpower. Great England. But George Washington and the early Americans said, huh, we ain't taking this. You're going to lose, England told George. 
King George told little George in America, you're going to lose. We have ships. We have a well-trained army. We have everything. You don't have nothing. George told them, I got something that you might believe is nothing. I have heart. I have courage. And I have will. And I will get you off my back. I'm not paying no more of your taxes. I'm not paying. I'm not accepting your oppression and your harassment no more. So they went to war for years. But when it's all said and done, George Washington and Patrick Henry, Ben Franklin, and the rest of them got England off their back, right? Did they or did they not? Was George and the other revolutionary people during that time, were they scared? Yes. But they knew they had to fight because they did not want to become a slave to England. Because basically that's what it was happening. They do all the work and England was getting all the benefits. No, buddy, it ain't happening. In fact, America had to go to war with England two times and beat them two times. Nobody can determine the outcome of a war. That's your assumption. I'm going to beat you. You're going to lose. That's what you assume. You have no idea of how this fight is going to end. Did you win in Vietnam? You said we're going to bomb them guys out of existence. You bombed them and you killed many, many Vietnamese people. Did you win the war? No. They sent you back home packing. And in fact, you left a lot of your artillery of war in Vietnam. You went to Afghanistan. Russia went first. Did Russia win? No. You went second with your arrogant self. You could do better than Russia. Did you win? No. So nobody knows the outcome of a war. Nobody. What is war? War is based on a goal. What is your goal? Is your goal, the reason why you're going to war is to get land, oil, women, water, other resources, what is your reason for going to, to war? So since this is a race war, what is the goal? The goal is that the black man and woman and children of this nation, we don't want your land. We don't want your money. The black man don't want your women. We don't want your children. What do you want? What is the goal? What is the purpose of this war? The purpose of this war is for you to leave us the hell alone. That's the purpose of the war. The purpose of the war is to kill you like you kill us. There must be a consequence when you take black life. Somebody got to pay for that life being taken unjustly. What you scared of. You're dying anyway. We've been suffering under this madness, this insanity going on 500 years. When are black people going to stop playing games? Now, it would be foolish for me to come on social media and tell you of a strategy that could be used against this vicious enemy. But I want to give you some type of idea of what can be done. First of all, this war, this conflict should not be about killing people. Well, ain't that what war is about? Kill people 
if you have to defend yourself, brother and sister, for the purpose of self-defense, you have no choice. However, the purpose, if we are involved in a race war, the purpose of that war should not be to kill. Why do you say that? Because you do not kill racist pink people by murdering them. They love that. They want to show on TV how you are a killer and how violent you are and, and your murder of them will inspire other pink people who, who may not like what racists do, not side with them, and finally see some type of empathy with your position. So it should not be about just murder of innocent persons. Because chances are in every war, many innocent persons uh, are killed. So you want to limit the loss of life, collateral human damage. What will hurt? Now listen, see, you got to understand the, the, the nature of your enemy. Because, see, they are death. So they don't mind murder and death. They don't, they like that kind of stuff. However, watch the news. Watch them. When their property is destroyed, when they lose their money, material things, races are connected to the material things of the earth. You and I know they are not what you call spiritual. They are material. And many of you have become material. Spiritual people use material things in life. But we are not obsessed like they are with material things. But they are. Material things, materialism gives them value. I don't need gold. I don't need silver. I don't need a lot of money in my pocket to give me value. But for you and races, for many of you and races, you need a big house. You need cars. You need as much material things that you can get to give yourself some type of value. Without that, you have no value. Even God, the belief in God don't give you value. You got to have something material. So in a race war, it is not about just about trying to kill Racist people, or simply because somebody has pink skin, otherwise, we are like them. You and I, we are not like them. We just want to be left to hell. I'm sorry, little children, but you know, this is a very emotional thing. Y'all heard the word hell, it's in the Bible, going to hell, but you just want to be left alone. We want to be left alone. So, to hurt them. All you need to do is destroy things. Destroy things. Mm, mm, mm. Races are arrogant. But I'm telling you. That, that arrogant thing is what will cause them to lose. You never... You never underestimate your opponent. There are many people who laugh at their opponent, make mock of their opponent, and then end up being embarrassed because their opponent beat them up really, really bad. They underestimated. The first time, back in the 80s, I believe, Mike Tyson... The boxer Mike Tyson lost that fight. He thought he could drink. He thought he could play with women. Screw around. Who was that? Buster Douglas. 
So he thought he was so great, he could do anything. And when he get in the ring with Buster Douglas, it was going to be nothing. Buster Douglas showed Mike Tyson something else. You never underestimate your opponent. No matter how weak, no matter how pitiful you think they might be. And this is the great mistake that race is going to make dealing with us. They think that we are not smart. They think that we are we are not brave. They think that we have no courage. They think nobody's going to help us in our fight against them. They're going to find out they are wrong. If you develop the right strategy, you, black man, and I'm talking to the black man because y'all claim you are the defenders of the black community. You are the defenders of women and children and all this macho stuff. Your opportunity is coming. Unless, of course, the races don't want to go in that direction, they show us different. If they really feel you ain't playing no games, <laughs> do you know if you have the right strategy, other people from other countries, I don't care what kind of security they have on the border, other people from other countries will come help us. We can also hire. What are they? What are those people call mercenaries? There are people, soldiers, call mercenaries. You can hire. We can hire. That will come here and help us fight, if necessary. You and I should be sick of them. I'm sick of this. I don't love nothing about America. Not in the condition that it's in. Stop telling me these lies about how great America is. When all America do and has done to black people is be an oppressor and a liar, a deceiver. If you don't want us around, stop playing games and say, look, we just don't, we don't like you. Then you help us find another place to go. That's the bottom line. We should not, if we had any kind of sense, we wouldn't want to be around you. But there are those who just so in love with your evil, they want to be with you. Well, let them continue trying to to, to, to work this stuff out with you. We shouldn't have to take this. We pay out, we pay more than our fair share of taxes. Black folks have died in this nation in your armed services. We have built this nation. In fact, that's why many of us don't want to leave America because our blood is in this soil. And I understand that. But at the same time, you don't control the room. You're not even close to controlling the room. You pay the rent, but you have no rights. You pay just as much rent as anybody else in the house, but you don't have the privileges. So that's the problem. So are you willing to fight and die for that privilege. So what you getting upset with me for? Except I would rather. Get out of the, out of the apartment. Because clearly. We not getting along. The problem. With the race war. For the races. Is that. You will have a fight. Inside your house. And you will have a fight outside your house. You cannot fight an enemy outside the house 
and an enemy inside the house at the same time for a long period of time. Something has got to give. Either you give the black man, women and children in this nation, you show us respect and give us justice, or you're going to weaken yourself where the enemies that you've been fighting all this time, now they see a way in your house and take you out for good. It's your choice. Be arrogant if you want to. No more playing games. Tired of racism. And I want to say this. In my conclusion. <clears throat> to those people. I call pink. Or Caucasian. Calling. So called white people pink. That's racist. No it's not racist. You are more pink. Than you are white. White in the English language means. Pure, holy, righteous, and so forth, clean. You have proven and you know for a fact you are none of these things. You are pink or Caucasian. And many of you act on your racism, your racist mentality that you were born into. You can't help it. Black folks in a racist society continue to think like a slave because that's how it's set up in a racist society. One people, regardless to what you see, one people look like the slave master and another people look like the slave. That's how it is in this nation. That's why since black people, the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, this is the reason why we are treated the way we are because we have been placed in a slave-like condition. And that's why we don't get any respect. That's why we are always made mockery of, mistreated, done unjustly, same thing that happened to our ancestors who were slaves. You go to jail for a traffic ticket. Because you did not single, you did not signal properly. They do this every day in and out of any city, around any corner. Clearly, that was a case where some racists wanted to do some harm and find a victim. That's all that was about. And whether, in this case, this poor sister whether she committed suicide or she was murdered, it makes no difference. The bottom line is that if it was not for this racist beast, she would still be alive today. But I want to say, again, in my conclusion, I want to say this to Caucasian people. It's not about hate. Well, in a way it is. Because you should hate oppression. You should hate injustice. You should hate those that do you wrong. Those who actually cause your murder. The loss of life to your brother, to your sister, to your mother, to your uncles, your aunts. You would be upset also. The black man and woman in this country, we hurt from this. Been dealing with this for almost 500 years. And every time black folks believe things change, things are getting better, then the same old crap start all over again. Killing black folks, putting black men in jail. All this stuff. Getting sick of it. That is one of the number one thing reasons why I don't want children. I don't want to bring my children into this madness. And y'all just having babies like babies going out of style. I don't care how many babies are boarded in the clinics. 
y'all still doing a good job keeping up. I don't care what the census or any other source is saying. All these baby uh, carriages and cribs and divers I see black folks buying all the time in Similac. And why would you want to be bringing these babies into this situation anyway? When you're not willing to face a vicious enemy that's eating your children. Eating you for dinner. Praying on your body. So the black man, the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, we hurt. And have been hurting for 500 years. And you talk to us. Like you have no heart. So. Why are you shocked. When we call you heartless. And have no conscience. After 500 years. How can you expect people to trust you with this type of behavior that Caucasian people exhibit? Just because you go to bed with a black man, just because you marry a black man, just because you got quote unquote black friends, that does not change anything. It has not changed nothing. All that did not stop that sister Sandra Blind, Blind from being harassed and now she's dead. Over a traffic ticket. And everybody know. It's because she was a black woman. It's not enough. That you kill black men. Now the races are going after. Black women. And pretty soon black children. Nobody is safe. And you wonder why. We talking about. In the thought of war. Is being entertained. When. The Caucasian people of this nation. When the same thing was happening to you. You had no problem. We got to go to war. With black folks. Oh don't do that. <laughs> Calm down. Try everything you suggest. Education. Voting. What else? Getting money. All this stuff y'all talk about. Sandra Blind is still dead. She was on her way to get a job. So if you really, if you are a Caucasian person and you really hate racism, then you have no problem with what I'm saying and you will take up your gun. You will take up your bazooka. You will take up your arms and you will side with us. It's all about strategy. What can America do? If we have a many long rules that set Fires to your force. Set fires to your nuclear facility. Your power plants. It's so many things. Somebody with a creative mind. You already. Black people are already in here. What you gonna do? Put us all in concentration camps? You already trying that. With your prison industrial complex. Break in the prison and get all the black men out. Because they can't break out. But what about somebody using weapons to break in your prison and let black, white, Mexicans and all these people out of the prison? Come join the fight. What you think? Chaos, mayhem, anarchy. Bring it. If black people can have no peace, you ain't getting no peace either. And you talking about black folks gonna lose the war. Well, guess what, baby? You gotta bring some ass 
as to get some as. Nobody playing games with you. Well thought out strategy. Not going to tell you. Don't surprise you. You think black folks is stupid. You think black folks is dumb. And above all, you think black folks scared of you. These brothers and sisters in the streets ain't scared. They got a bunch of coons and sambos and hambones. Sambo. See what I said? Sambo. Bunch of wacko coward Negroes. That's telling them to calm down. You don't need to calm down. Tired of playing games. I don't want. I'm not going to none of your debates. I'm not wasting the sole of my shoes on your ineffective march. That means nothing. Because you're not willing to do what I'm talking about. Because it's time. The Quran said fight with those who fight with you. Never be the aggressor. 500 years black people have never been the aggressor. We have been the victim. Time, you tell us let us not be victims. Then we pick up, we do what we have to. No more, we're no, no longer going to be victims. You're going to be a victim too for a change. The Caucasian people always talk telling black folks, stop being victims. We play the race card. The Caucasian people, y'all created. Your ancestors, you created the race card. And every day, and, and every day in America, you can go to any court and you have a bunch of Caucasian people talk about they victims. But when it comes to black folks, Oh, don't play the race card. Don't take advantage of anything on a racial, in a, in a racial manner that you can benefit from, but they do every day. They go to court every day suing somebody because they victims. And black people, so-called Negroes, African Americans, whatever you want to call yourself, we go for that line from them. We love to take advice from an outright enemy that have done nothing for you, don't have no plans to do nothing for you, give you scraps, give you a pacifier instead of a real breast to feed on. They give you a pacifier so you can suck air. So I will say this. Let the Racists believe they can bomb us out of existence. Let the racists believe they will kill us wholesale. Let the racists believe anything they want to. But you don't believe them when they tell you you going to lose. Because that has yet to be seen. But if I, but if a situation arrives, and it does come down to that. Even if you do lose black man. Listen, listen to me now. Don't be afraid to lose. Because really when it's all said and done. You will not be losing. Because whether they tell you or not. When they bury their dead. When they have to replant their forests. When they have to rebuild that country themselves. They will respect you. Because you will do it again. And you're not no joke. And you're nothing to play with. So you will win. Regardless. To what they talking about. And that's a fact. <laughs> I like that. That's what King Noble says all the time. That's a fact. I want to make very clear that we don't want violence. We just want to be left alone. We want to be treated right. 
all this investigations and, and all this garbage that all this crap that you hand to us every time one of your races murder us. If the government, if the law punished these people the way that it should, then they would not be doing what they're doing, but other racist people would make millionaires out of these Caucasian people that murder black folks. And this is just a flash in the pan. We are still discriminated against in housing, in jobs, and anything, everything else in this nation. But dang, you got to kill me too? I'm already struggling. I already got to watch my back and be very cautious dealing with racist pink people. And then I got to wonder, will I be next to be murdered? What about black on black crime? If it was not for the situation that racists put us in, you would not have to worry about black on black crime. What about pink on pink crime? Mexican on Mexican crime? What about that too? So what? That's nothing but distraction from the issue. The issue is about you. It's not about black on black crime or Mexican on black crime. It's about what you doing. We need to deal with you first. Put them all in line. Dealing with you first. Deal with these other suckers next. Don't divert the situation and distract to keep the pressure off of you. So with that said, brothers and sisters, we need to start playing games. If you don't want to get real, then you might as well sit back in the cut and just say, well, it is, it is what it is. But for those of us who have grown tired, our sister Fanny Lou Hamer said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Then we organize ourselves. And if you kill one of us, if you murder one of us, then you got hell to pay. Now those other Negroes that love you, then they're on their own. And I will shed no tear for a fool, for a coward. And I want to say, tell these people who want to snitch and betray us. <laughs> it's not like, <laughs> it's going to be a whole new ball game. You better take down your, your, your YouTube videos and all this other crazy stuff you got that show that you a traitor to your own people. You dang, silly, cowardly fool. <laughs> Need to stop playing games, for real. Thank you for listening. This your brother, the most powerful voice on YouTube, the Angel Snub Nub Seven, the most actually the most powerful voice on social media, and that's a fact. Myself and some other brothers, we all in the same category. Thank you for listening. Think about what was said. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth.